Hey everyone, Harold Fisher, WHUR News with Politics 963 on WHUR.com. All things political in this segment. I'm here with Dr. Clarence Lusain. He is the chair of the political science department here at Howard University. Lots to talk about in this short period of time, Dr. Lusain. Let's go first with John Conyers. He has stepped down amid this swirl of sexual harassment allegations. Uh, Talk to me about what this means for uh, Capitol Hill. Yeah, this is a systematic event uh, for the Congressional Black Caucus, for the Democrats, and for Congress. Uh, Conyers has been in since 1965. He's been through everything you can imagine. And in that, he's had an impact. Uh, the Martin Luther King national holiday, that comes from Conyers. His work on voting rights, that comes from Conyers. So he's had an impact. Uh, however, certainly these allegations, um, which seem extremely credible, and more women are coming out every day, uh, really do signal that it was time for him to step down. Mm -hmm. um, part of it had to do with his health. His health has actually been deteriorating for probably the last 15 or 20 years, uh, for sure. Uh, but that combined with these allegations, he may not see it at the moment, but it really probably is in his best interest. Uh, one of the dangers of him hanging around uh, was that it was going to probably start to threaten his pension. If he was going to be exposed, uh, kicked out of Congress, uh, that would have been a problem. So this way he goes out not in the best way possible, but given the circumstances, this is probably the best choice. Let's switch over to the GOP tax plan. It has passed the Senate, still working its way through some of the particulars on Capitol Hill. Still a lot of concern from the Democrats and even some Republicans as to what this specifically means and how it will affect your, your average Jane and Joe. Let's talk, first of all, about the the impact on on housing and and deductions what what are we expecting uh, will be the impact well just in general there are clear winners and clear losers in this bill okay the winners basically the corporate sector the financial sector all of those elites that have been craving lusting even for decades for this kind of uh, tax break and they managed to get it uh, the losers are also pretty clear for middle class families, for working class families, for students, kind of across the spectrum. And part of what's really uh, disheartening is that most of the people on the Hill have no idea what is in the bill. It was rushed through at the last minute, 500 plus pages that were scribbled on. Uh, on the House side, you had a similar kind of process because it really was not about let's see what's financially in the interest of the country. This was, let's get a win for Donald Trump. Let's ask real quick, you, you talked about some of those corporate tax cuts and one of the arguments has been that if you give corporations tax cuts, they will hire more people. That certainly hasn't been proven. Here's another argument. Exactly. Is it possible that if you give them tax cuts, that they will be less likely to lay off people. Is that a possibility? Well, let's look at what's going on. Even before this bill has passed, the corporate sector has been doing fine. Flush look with at the cash. stock market. They're living it rich. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't translated into job creation, hasn't necessarily translated into job erosion. And companies are still going overseas when they see that opportunity. They're not coming back to the United States. Trump's promises about manufacturing and about coal mining coming back is just delusional. Mm. So there, and all of the studies show that none of this translates and trickles down to the job creations that they're talking about. And in fact, what we were going to create is a massive deficit. And the big worry is that that will then become the excuse for part two. Part two then is what has long been a goal of Paul Ryan and the conservative wing of the, of the Republican Party has been the entitlements. Mm -hmm. Medicaid, Social Security, Medicare, all of those programs, uh, they, they cannot go at them unless they have the rationale that they have to deal with 
a trillions of dollars in, in deficit. Something for us to continue looking at. Uh, Dr. Clarence Hussein, political science chair at Howard University. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget, you can find all things political on Politics 963 on WHUR.com. And don't forget to pay attention to our social media platforms. That includes uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Insta Instagram. I'm Harold Fisher, WHUR News, and I'll see you next time.